Good morning, everyone uh, who is here attending with us today for the Water Advocacy Symposium. Uh, if you can, if someone can confirm in the chat that you can hear me, that'll be helpful just to make sure that uh, people can hear us talking and that we're good to go. All right. I see people. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Dr. Kutcher Risling Baldi. I am the Department Chair of Native American Studies um, and have been working, we've been working in partnership this summer with Save California Salmon uh, and their director, Regina, who's also on the um, Zoom right now. Uh, on a water advocacy and water protection speaker series and event, which would culminate in this symposium that we're starting today. We're very, very excited to begin this. Uh, it's been a long planning process and we're super grateful to all the people who joined us this summer as part of this series leading up to this event, who watched the events as they um, were held throughout the different weeks. And uh, we just wanted to let you know that if you were not able to um, attend this summer's speaker series, which included a number of events and core courses and trainings uh, and panels. They are available on the Native American Studies um, YouTube page, and uh, we can provide you a link in the chat. Um, you can also just go to YouTube and type in Native American Studies Humboldt State, and what you'll see is a number of the recordings of the panels and the videos from this summer. And it's an opportunity, I think, to, um, to just see a little bit about what we were doing. We've had some amazing panels. I'm very, very grateful today that we've been joined by Julian Lang, who's going to offer us um, a prayer and some good words to begin our day as we talk about water protection and water advocacy uh, all over the world. We have panelists who are talking about this from all over the world. So Julian, please feel free to take it away. Thank you. Uh, well, I am um, here uh, in McKinleyville, actually, and uh, about ready to head up the river to gather acorns and to do uh, do my my multi annual um, uh, migration uh, back to the center of the world, as we say, uh, kind of a trait. Uh, a trait of local native people from here in Northwestern California, as you all, as many of you know, at least. And um, the trip is always, uh, uh, the trip is always uh, reminds me of uh, trips when I was a, a little kid, uh, when we lived here in Eureka, we would um, go to, um, go up to Katamid, as we call it, my uncle lived there at Cudamine, where the this where the current uh, school is, uh, the Junction School at some Spar, and so that was our kind of like stomping grounds as kids, and um, the river, and uh, at the Salmon River. My great grandmother lived on the Salmon River, so that was our second river, and uh, so it was always a part of us uh, growing up. Uh, being held by the held by my ankles by my uncles or uh, cousins other adults there uh, in the middle of the night uh, as they flashed uh, their flashlights into the water and and we would grab eels with our hands that were hanging from the water in the dead of night like two three o'clock in the morning which was you know total blackness and except for that one light and us hanging over rocks being held. So it was like uh, something that we we had, it was our kind of like our place where we went, you know, hauling fish out of the salmon, out of the falls from the falls. And uh, so it's been with me all, all of my life pretty much. And um, and then uh, as I became uh, an adult and, and started taking on more responsibilities and participating in world renewal ceremonies and other ceremonies, uh, it became really clear to me how important it was that our stories and our prayers and, and all really originate with uh, that story of the, um, the river. I think in a previous uh, seminar I talked about or 
uh, webinar, I talked about um, the creation of the Klamath River uh, that um, uh, that maybe I'll touch on because uh, it really really reminds us of what the river is. Uh, it uh, it's it's a story about the creation of the world when the world was being created and and it was being created in multiple ways by multiple spirits people and uh, but there was one who knew everything and he kind of came down and sat to look at the world because all the spirits were here creating different parts of the world and uh, when he came uh, down to see what all the handiwork was. Uh, he came down and, and um, uh, looked around and saw that they had created a really nice world, but it was all sand. And it may, it may have looked really nice, but it was not, not uh, sus sustainable. The, the world was, uh, it would not sustain life. And uh, so he kind of gave a thumbs down, I guess you would say, and said, no, this is not, human beings cannot live on a place like this. It was said that the, the world was going to be created because a new race of, of beings were coming into existence and they were going to be Yas Ada, the human beings. And so uh, he left and um, all the spirits think went to the next phase of the world and the next thing you know, they were done and so uh, he came to look at all the handiwork and looked around and saw oh my gosh it's like um, uh, still not going to be able to sustain life sustain life uh, he had a, a in, intuitive knowledge uh, vision that um, the world had to be in a particular kind of way so he says well maybe what we need then is rocks and so he created all the rocks because the wa the wa the sand was being pushed every which way but then those rocks kind of held things in place and that looked good and uh he looked around and traveled around the world no nope, no nope, that's still not going to do it uh, there's nothing growing there's nothing here and so finally he went up on top of the highest mountain uh, way up high and sat there and looked around the world from the high, that high place. And then finally, um, he said that, uh, uh, he said, no, the human beings are, they're going to come into a world that can't sustain, that will have no life. They won't be able to, they won't be able to live for very long. And I really feel sorry for them. So we began crying. And as he cried, tears flowed, flowed cried so hard and and the um the uh the wa the tears were kind of flowed around his ankles and then they began filling and flowing down and they flowed down down the 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 banks of all the of all the uh, mountains and the next thing you know they flowed down and they created all these giant creeks which we all know from blue creek to um, Tule Creek, to uh, uh, Bluff Creek, and uh, Red Cat, all these different creeks that we now know that are really big uh, uh, tributaries for the climate. And all of his tears flowed down, and there was a channel that had been built that, that uh, kind of flowed through our lands. Uh, and uh, all the tears you know, came together there and began flowing. And that was the beginning of the, of the Klamath River. And how that was such an important, uh, an important thing uh, for us that made our river, you know, not just the water, um, you know, not just H2O or anything like this, but re really was um, the tears of uh, the creator spirit. And uh, so that was a very important uh, knowledge that, you know, eventually, you know, and then all of our ceremonies and all of our stories keep 
going back and reminding us of that, of that time. Maybe not that time specifically, but it reminds us of the sanctity, the, the uh, importance that uh, we would not be here without that water, that the water was the number one thing um, to, uh, to the spark of life. The sp it's funny, the spark of life is water. And uh, all these recent uh, fires and everything, forest fires that have gone on, you know, we pray for water. That's another person. So the water goes down and then it comes back. And that's one of our prayers that, we, you know, when, when we want to renew, we tell the, the spirits that, you know, we're sending all this bad, all, everything that's come together now uh, in, during this year. And we want it to send it down and we send it down in the river, send it down. And then it goes out into the ocean, who's a doctor and the doctor then brings back all that water purified in the form of rain. And so it comes back and that circle keeps going around and around and around. And so, and when it gets back, then it, then it rains. Uh, there's a talk of the meanest man in the world that we knew, uh, the meanest spirit, one of them, well, there were several of them, but this was a very mean person. He's very arrogant, very, very hard to get along with it. He was ah, pa, uh, pa, ah, ah, in our language means fire. And fire was very arrogant. Oh, nobody could kick my ass. He would say things like that. Nobody can, uh, nobody could take me. Nobody could put me out, he would say. And everybody would come and try to put him out. The, all the birds came and he would flop, he would flame up and the birds would all get scared and fly away. You know, the animals came, all the big animals came and they got scared and were, ran, ran off. All the, everybody came, all the spirits came be, uh, uh, as their groups of, uh, I guess we called species today would come and try their best to run off ah, and his arrogance and he sat would sit on the, on a little hill there and run everybody off. Finally, this little old man showed up, walking up and he would laugh at him and point at him. Ah, <laughs> look at him. He thinks he's gonna kick my butt. He ain't gonna do nothing. He's just an old man. Look at him, he barely walk. Then he came and they said, and he came and he walked up, walking up closer and closer on the path. And next thing you know, he lifts, slowly pulls back his hair like this. I mean, his he had uh, over his head, he had a, a deer hide over his head, kind of hiding his head, a hoodie. Uh, the first hoodie of, that we know, that we've ever heard of. So anyway, he comes and then he slowly, he walks up and then slowly he pulls back his, uh, the hide. And each time, each, mo each millimeter it would come back, a drop would come from the sky in that, Mead man was looking around, what is that? And he would hear that sound, psst, psst, psst. And that old man would pull back his, the hide further and further and pretty soon it started coming down and he looked around and he says, oh no, I'm afraid of that man. And he pulled it back and pulled it back. And the next thing you know, the rains came. That mean man was gone. And so we think about that, all of this, uh, you know, we, we talk about the goodness of fire in the burning of it, but also how it can also be uncontrollable and not, uh, uh, not good. And so uh, that, the balance of that, of course, is the fire and how much we've been praying for the fire, the little bit of fire, I mean, the little bit of rain that came was uh, enough to at least give us some, some uh, a foothold to be able to stop the fire. So this is what it was all about. The water is a continuous, uh, a continuous thing that that uh, that we have to revere, that we have to remember is the beginning, the spark of life, even though it's water, and uh, and that it is. Uh, brings us, you know, both our food, it also 
provides for all the plants and all of these different things. And that's why for me, it's impossible to believe that, you know, I, you know, I don't want to say Republic, all Republicans are, you know, anti-water, but I would say that, you know, the policies and uh, even, a, you know, because it seems like government is, um, really sees water as a, is kind of like a, a new oil or something. It's like the oil industry, you know, uh, take as much as you can for as long as you can. And now it's like poison the water as fast as you can for as long as you can. And, uh, and then we'll, you know, they'll uh, count the bodies later or something. It's just a really horrible anti life uh, kind of mentality when water is such a precious and important thing. I have, um, uh, I have a prayer uh, during um, this, uh, the uh, no dapple um, era, it seems like an era now, like several years ago, there is this, um, there was a local a call for people to do songs and and all of that and um, do prayers and all. And so we began that process here with our language classes. We do kind of language classes here locally. And, and so anyway, this is the prayer. Uh, I, I don't, let me see if I can um, share my screen. I think I can find it. I think this is it here. Uh, if you guys could see that or not, hopefully you can. We can see um, it. We can see I it. I can see. Okay, good. We can see it, Julian. Okay. Uh, so it says, oh, so up here it says, oh, that means the spirits of this land. Oh, hear me. Mate ko wara nano, mate ko wara nano ishaha kramwansa sakadib, sakadib heish. For some reason I can't see this. Mate um, pakusara o mahakaya cheish nano ishaha kramwansa. Kai hadi kai kontai wara ripane ishpa ishaha. So I alone know thee. That's our prayer that, you know, we pray as an individual human being, you know, just as those spirits were all individuals. They didn't do everything. They did this and this one did that. And we all together, one, one at a time, I see... Uh, these all these uh, beautiful faces over here on the and uh, you know we all do what we do each of us na what a kitsch I alone and um, that's what we are we are all alone and but uh, if we are all alone for water then we're all good people in my in my op humble opinion. So I would like to um, leave you all with those words and uh, that I have one last thing um, that I'm going to attempt to do at this uh, hour, early, early hour, but uh, uh, my, one of my apprentices, language apprentices, Mamie uh, Donahue up from Orleans and I have been singing and uh, Lynn and I uh, have been singing the song over the years now. Uh, she's, uh, Mamie has recently learned it and sang it at this last gathering that we did, but it's a story about um, a song about uh, what we call Ishipishi Falls. The, that's the center of the world for the center of the world. That place is um, that place is, uh, the, the center of the world is uh, kind of where everything kind of came out of. And there's a mountain that sits there, uh, we call him, but that used to be a human being. He was a spirit. He wanted to sit there and watch to make sure that we did right by the fish, by the salmon, by all of the uh, water. 
and uh, he gave us all the tools to be able to live. And uh, and there and you see and right below it is this long stretch of of white water that goes down, and that's where uh, is a kind of the fishery where the, the salmon fishery for cutty meat and for ishi fish and uh, and for a lot of uh, Indian people, but uh, but that's where uh, the fish fish happens, and uh, so there was a story that they um, that used to be an actual waterfall and the, the river came and then it dropped down, and um, I've been doing some recent research and I, I kind of expand my my knowledge of that place now because of what I uh, what I've recently discovered, but. Uh, uh, there was a woman that was uh, married to uh, the bird that lived there on top of the mountain there, Auyich. Uh, that bird is Aikneich, on the one who lives above. And that person is an important bird for us, a peregrine falcon. And so uh, falcon lived up there, and he had a he had a had a wife. Her name was uh, Finnish God, and the the grizzly bear. And Finnish God, and was kind of a uh, she got started getting jealous of her husband because he kept running off. Come to find out, he had another another wife way out somewhere, and he was bringing home the kids that he'd been having. He had he even had a second family, and she never had kids, and so she was kind of mad when she found out that he was bringing home some a new family. And so she went over there and said that she grabbed that she started ripping all those rocks out of uh from that from that falls and um and she scattered and so you see all those rocks scattered all down in front of uh all down there that used to be a big huge waterfall and then she they said and then she even threw them down to ike's falls she said nobody's ever going to be able to put it together and so all the all the rocks at Ike's Falls were created uh, down there too uh, by her ripping that out, and so this song kind of re uh, reflects on that uh, because it says it's made by human beings who said that long time ago they used to try to uh, they tried to destroy these falls, but I still hear the I still hear the um, the roar, its roar from that. It's like the roar of those falls still is sounding today. And uh, even though they tried their best to destroy it. And so it kind of reminds us that this has been an ongoing thing that, you know, our world is always going to be, uh, be attacked. Think about uh, all of our stories. The world has always been under attack. And so it's only our belief in it. It's only our resolve and our ability to see beyond ourselves and to see our connection with the spirit world, the spirit people and the earth itself. The final thing I would say before I sing is um, uh, I asked my great grandmother who was uh, 107 years old, they said, uh, some think older, uh, and she was in a sad state when, when, a, when a relation had passed away. And she said, um, hey, uh, I, uh, she was really sad and said, I don't want to, uh, I don't want to do anything today because I'm feeling sad. I said, and I thought, oh, she's, uh, she's, I was thinking, you know, it's kind of maybe a white man coming out of, in me. I was like, oh my gosh, she's, She's vulnerable right now. Maybe I can ask her the most important question I have in my mind, and maybe she will be able to answer it because she's uh, feeling so sad. I said, Grandma, what did the old Indians think was God? What did they say was God? And she says, looked at me like kind of funny, and she said, the earth, the water, the rocks, the leaves, everything. So I thought that, you know, one, I had my answer about this big question for me, what was really God? And uh, then I found out 
that it was actually the earth itself. And, and so uh, uh, this song kind of, for me, brings that all together. So this is that song. Yeah, it goes like this. Um, Cut so thank you all. Have a good day today and uh, give them all, um, give them all hell, I guess you could say. All right. So and Nick, have a good, good time. And thanks for uh, inviting me to, to do this. We'll talk to you later. Thank you, Julian, for joining us this morning and starting off, starting us off in such a great way. And, and you're right, we will get out there and make sure we give everybody hell today and tomorrow and the next day. Um, I'm going to introduce Regina now, who is the director of Save California Salmon, so she can get our next panel started. The next panel is going to be hosted here on this Zoom site. And then after this panel, we'll be having dual panel sessions, and uh, we'll be sharing the links to both Zoom so that you can go to whichever Zoom session you'd like to go to. But this panel is held here. You're in the right place. Go, Regina. <laughs>